Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having an amazing day. And as always guys, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And we need to be self-educated because if we are not, we have to believe what people tell us. And we have to believe what the government and the law tells us. And as I will show you in this video, what they tell us is wrong and they know it's wrong. It's complete fraud and it's wordplay and they are purposely tricking us into creating contracts with them. And this is what it's all about. So uh, this is also how they, they've stolen all the land, all the houses, all the resources and pretty much all of our money which is wealth. So if you can imagine when, when there's no money and you have wealth, then you just own it. And if someone wants to take it, it's fairly hard. But when they change it to money and everything has a money value and then they bring in things like debt, mortgages, and you have to pay them back. If you can't, they can then take the physical property. So what they're doing is they're swapping physical property and resources for fake money that they invented. So let's have a look at maritime law. Okay, this is just a definition from the Free Dictionary, Free Law Dictionary. Maritime law is law governing sea or seaport bound actions conducted and commerce transacted, registration, license and inspection procedures for ships and shipping contracts, insurance, and carriage of goods and passengers are included. A slightly bigger definition is maritime law is the collection of laws and agreements that govern the behavior and activities on the seas. The area of law governs how people interact and do business on the waters of the world. Also called admiralty law, maritime law primarily governs activities on international waters. Without, there are also laws that apply to the waters in and near each country. Generally, each country applies their own laws to inland waters like lakes and rivers. And it just goes on telling you that it's all about ships and what happens and passengers and salvage and treasure. And that is what it's all about. But this Maritime law has been changed. The law of the sea has now become the law of the land. So this website is called expertinalllegalmatters.com and this says how the system tricked you into slavery. It all starts with the Colonial Court of Admiralty Act 1890. This is where common law was changed to civil jurisdictions. And there's a PDF you can download. I'll leave this link if you want to download that and read it. I'm also going to leave a few links below if you're interested in this topic. Just, yeah, have a couple of people that you can watch and really get an understanding of what's going on here. So it says here, an act to amend the law respecting the exercise of AD 1890 Admiralty Jurisdiction in Her Majesty's Dominions and elsewhere out of the United Kingdom, 25 July 1890. And this Act may be cited as the Colonial Courts of Admiralty, Short Act 1890. And what is this Act? Every court of law in a British possession, which is for the first time declared in pursuance of this Act to be a Court of Admiralty, or which, if no such declaration is in force in the possession, has therein original unlimited civil jurisdictions, shall be a court of admiralty with the jurisdictions in this Act mentioned, and may for the purpose of this jurisdiction exercise all the powers which it possesses for the purpose of its other civil jurisdictions, and such court in reference to the jurisdictions conferred by this Act is in this Act referred to as Colonial Court of Admiralty. Where in a British possession the Governor is the sole judicial authority, the expression Court of Law for the purpose of this section includes such Governor. 
So what are they saying there? It's a lot of legal double talk, you know, and they love to do this to make it, you know, hard to read. They actually read it differently. It's got a lot to do with numbers and word counts and all this stuff. I'll leave links to the videos uh, below. But what they're saying here is basically every court in Britain and in their other colonies is now an admiralty court, a court of admiralty with the full jurisdictions of admiralty. As you can see here, it says if they had unlimited civil jurisdictions, they now have full admiralty jurisdictions. So it's, it's just changed it from the land of the, the law of the land to the law of the sea. And it says down here the possession of the governor is the court. Possession of the governor is the sole, sole judicial authority. The expression court of law for the purpose of this section includes such governor. So he is the sole judicial authority under this act. The jurisdiction of a colonial court of admiralty shall subject to the provision of this act be over the like places, persons, matters and all things as the admiralty jurisdiction of the High Court in England, whether existing by virtue or any statute or otherwise, and the Colonial Court of Admiralty may exercise such jurisdiction in like manner and to as full as an extent as the High Court in England, and shall have the same regard as that court to international law and the Committee of Nations. So again, everything is now ruled by Admiralty, and every court in the land now has the same jurisdiction as the High Court in England. Subjects to the provision of this Act, any enactment referring to a Vice Admiralty Court, which is contained in an Act of the Imperial Parliament or in a Colonial Law, shall apply to a Colonial Court of Admiralty and be read as if the expression Colonial Court of Admiralty were therein substituted for Vice Admiralty Court or for other expressions respectively referring to such. So that's just to do with the names. They're saying if we slightly change the name, it's still a court. And it goes down here, there's lots more, but it goes a lot more down there. And then we've got all these PDFs. So what has gone on? Well, basically what's happened is they have taken over with paperwork and wordplay. And this is to do with language, of course. And I've always wondered in my whole life, language has um, interested me because it's confused me. Our language seems to be very, you know, we don't seem to have enough words, you know, to, to truly sort of get down into certain subjects. Uh, you know, it's a very surface language. When you look at languages, like, especially like, you know, the Vedic language and Indian languages, you know, and they have these words, you know, people have surnames that are like 20 letters long. And they have all these words and they're very intricate and they just always seem like they had a lot more context to their language than English. And of course, again, English we know is a conglomerate of, you know, we've got French words and Spanish words and you know, words from everywhere. And then of course we have things like there, there and there, sun and sun. You know, all these words, where and where, that, that, that are the same but we're told they have different meanings. You know, like, like you plant a plant, you build a building. And it's very simplistic. It, it just seems very simplistic. And there's a reason for this, and it's because they've changed our language, guys. Okay, so uh, language comes from, we're told, the Phoenicians. That's why we have the phonetic alphabet. And we have words like phone, which is communication. We also have phony. If you've watched Martin Lidke's work, he talks a lot about the Phoenicians. And they were obviously a seafaring uh, maritime civilization. And they've gone around and they've changed languages. And one thing about language which always confused me again is the word phonetic. I always wondered why phonetic which means to be spelled the same way it sounds. I always wondered why the word phonetic wasn't spelt the same way it sounds. 
Uh, it's because it's Phoenician. It's got PH for Phoenicians. So what is a pidgin language? A pidgin language, originally a language, a language that typically developed out of a sporadic and limited contact between Europeans and non-Europeans in locations other than Europe. From the 16th through to the early 19th, 19th century, <laughs> from the 16th through to the early 19th century, and often in association with activities such as trade, plantation agriculture, and mining. So typical pigeons function as lingua francas, or means an intergroup of communication. So here you can see a pidgin language is a language that basically it's to do with trade. It's to do with maritime law, people going around the world in boats. Admiralty law, maritime, maritime law, it's the same thing. Going around in boats and using their law on the land and tricking people and saying that they have jurisdiction, but they don't. They only have jurisdiction for their boat. And so they have changed so many things. And seriously, they have changed paper. Paper is made from wood and they have changed that to signify their boats. Uh, very strange. Uh, there's a lot to this, to obviously to the law, but just want to give you an overview of what's gone on. So yeah, pidgin languages are basically a simplified language. It's a simplified down language that's used for trade. And that is what English is, and no doubt what many of our, especially Western languages are. They've been simplified into trade languages. So what is lingua franc francus? It's uh, literally tongue of the Franks. No, it's Frankish language, tongue of the Franks. Language used as a means of communication between populations speaking vernaculars that are not, not mutually intelligible. The term was first used during the Middle Ages to describe a French and Italian based jargon or pidgin that was developed by crusaders and traders in the Eastern Mediterranean and characterized by the invariant forms of its nouns, verbs and adjectives. These changes have been interpreted as interpreted as simplifications of the Romance languages because they bring together very diverse groups of people, many empires and many trade. Anthropots have had lingua franca, uh, franca sorry, if pigeon have sometimes defined less informatively. Okay, now continue writing, got a oh, seven up, got a sign up, but that's basically what it is. A simplification of a language turned into a trade language. So they're saying, you know, we, that language used to be a lot more complex. And as, you know, certain people went around and were trading with everyone, they needed a simple, you know, a language so that they could talk about trade and just, you know, a small section of, you know, of, of what the language is used for. But then over time, that's been turned into the basically legalese and it's been turned into our language. So it's been simplified out. Our language has been completely simplified and that's what, and changed as well. They also add words together, things like breakfast. You know, it's break fast, right? That's the first meal of the day after you've fasted all night. And that, that comes from, uh, well, the idea comes from the Essenes where they used to only eat from when the sun was highest in the sky until the sun was at uh, the horizon. So basically midday to sundown they would eat and then they would sleep and they would fast until 12 o'clock and then they would break the fast breakfast christmas christ mass i mean it's all over the place so admiralty law um i actually wrote down uh hang on so here's just a couple maritime words maritime is law of the sea currency Currents, right? To flow, currency, and bank. River banks, this is where it comes from. So they used to stop on the banks of rivers and unload their cargo. And then load on cargo and, and use the currents to flow and go somewhere else and make money. Warship, worship, very close. 
birth. Now, uh, you've probably all heard of this, you know, birth and birth. Birth is a place where you put a ship, where you hold a ship, and we obviously are told that we have a birth certificate. And women's waters, water, you know, their waters break before they have birth. And this is all tied in to uh, birth certificates and how they, what they do is they actually uh, incorporate us as dead, as, as dead entities, and that way they don't have to deal with us unless we know their language and we can talk to them as, in their eyes, as living beings. And so this is what we've got to learn, because when, when you do, the thing is they have to, they have to abide by their law. This is one of the things that they do. So when you know how to do it, you can outsmart them, because everything is false. All, all debt is fraud. Or tax is fraud. You know, if you've got a, lo a loan, which is called a mortgage, as you see here, mortgage means death pledge. Literally, it means death pledge. And a mort, mortuary. Death pledge. That's what a mortgage is. Because you sign one, and then you've got to work yourself to death to pay it off. That's how they get us. Dock. Ship stock, a document, a court doc. You have to set, you have to stand in the dock, don't you? So this is how they say, oh, you know, you're on dry land, blah blah blah. You're, well, you're you're in our jurisdiction, but on the docks when you're in court, and that's where they get you up, and you've got to plead your case. Mast is a master. Chartered. It's a ship hired or freighted. And we have chartered accountants and we have charters, chartered, you know, we have charters obviously that are a uh, legal term, but it means to hire something so you can use it as freight. So what is a chartered accountant? What's the freight? Because we know what the, what the payoff is. <laughs> it's our tax money. So where, where the freight? Chartered accountants, you know, like a sheet of paper. A ship's sails are called sheets. It's how they get things to move. Court obviously is court. You know, you go to court, and you probably get caught. And a courtroom is fictional. It, it's not. An, it's not the actual room. It actually only exists on paper. Uh, and if you know the ins and outs, if you go into a courtroom and the the right document isn't signed by the judge, then there's no courtroom there, and the judge is sitting there illegally impersonating a judge. And if you know what you say, if you know how to deal with it and what you're talking about, you can t actually take over the courtroom and throw throw the judge out. Um, a court clerk takes money. Bank tellers used to be called clerks, didn't they? Bank clerks. And they all have ledgers, which legitimizes things. A ledger makes things legitimate in their eyes. Jurisdiction means opinion, so don't use it. <laughs> Printing your name is legal, cursive is not. So they only see print, you know, it's always on, on documents. It's print your name, isn't it? And then the signature. The signature is different. That's that's uh, that's your um, agreement. But you need to print your name because they don't recognize cursive. And it's interesting that it is called curse. A bond is bondage. And then we have things like wedding ring. A wedding ring is a seal, you know, like you used to see on, on manuscripts, they put rings around them. Sometimes it was a um, like a ribbon ring with a wax seal on it. Sometimes they were metal. So these are some of the, the words and how they get us. Um, and of course, what do they teach us? What's the first thing we get taught when we go to school? We get taught to spell, don't we? So they're casting a spell on us. They teach us to spell. The first thing, and, and you know, the second thing is don't use your imagination, isn't it? Go into the left brain. So this is maritime law, guys, and how they're getting us. It's, this is, like I said, just an introduction. Uh, I will do some more on this topic. Not sure when, but I will leave links below to some very good channels with some, some people who really know what they're talking about because this... If you look online, there's lots and lots of people talking about this and trying this out, but a lot of them 
you know that they don't they don't have the full story and so it doesn't work and you'll see if you follow lots of these channels and look at these videos lots of them end up in jail um, I used to follow oh, what was his name Dean Dean Clifford I'm pretty sure it was and he ended up in jail many times because he knew some stuff and but basically he was trying stuff out to see what worked and using himself as the guinea pig and you don't want to do that uh, so yeah there'll be some links to some people who know what they're talking about below so check them out if you're interested in this topic because the truth is this is a way that we can really free ourselves and free the world guys because we're held in bondage by paper by uh, legalese by spelling you know wordplay they've tricked us and they're getting us to comply and this is how they, they get us in debt and how they, how they can throw us in jail and do all these things now if you know how to talk to them you know the language they can't do that because they don't have the power because once you know the language you're suddenly alive in their eyes they have to view you as alive and then they have to treat you as as you know a living entity you know an, an eternal entity even as part of god that's how they have to treat you that's why they have to kill us at birth in their eyes so that they don't have to deal with us so I hope you found this interesting. Uh, I got a little bit as well of this from a channel, uh, Dane. It's not uploading. Yeah, this one, Dane Calloway. Uh, and this is what language was used before English. And he goes into a little bit of this and the different languages and how they've sort of changed language. So I'll leave the link to that as well. All right. Hope you found that interesting, guys. Thanks for spending some time with me. And I shall catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.